So on April 20th, Apple hosted its periodic preview of upcoming products, and there was some pretty impressive tech at that showcase. Now I wanna focus on this in the capacity of the voice of gamers. What of these products, if any, are applicable to gamers and their specific needs, such as streaming, video recording and editing, and also mobile gaming? Let's get right into this thing. All right, you guys, share my screens. Go ahead and fade out that music. Just a couple skoshes here so it's not overpowering my voice. So Apple hosted this event as they always do a few short months before they actually released these products. And there were some really, really awesome products in my opinion that I personally am pretty excited about. However, as with most Apple slash Mac products, they do still have some limitations when it comes to their application and usefulness for gamers. First of all, the new iMac is insanely thin incredibly powerful and has some really awesome features, some of which actually would be useful for gamers if it wasn't still a Mac and still had the limitations of a Mac when it comes to gaming. Well, what do you mean by that, Kevin? Thank you for asking. So I'm gonna read this little excerpt right here and this basically summarizes it perfectly. Macs are not good for gaming because they focus more on software optimization than raw hardware power. Most Macs simply don't have the kind of hardware power required to run modern games. Plus, the selection of games available for Mac OS are very small compared to Windows. So that pretty much sums it up as well as I could. And that is very true. That has traditionally and historically been the case, and it is to this day. There is not the same applications, game launchers, uh, Steam, stuff like that for Macs. And when there is, when there is a version available for Apple, it is severely degraded in performance or it just doesn't have all the feature sets available to its Windows counterpart. And on top of that, Apple is phenomenal when it comes to software optimization that kind of counterbalances the lack of hardware power. They do this in their cell phones. For example, they've been running on four gigabytes of RAM for the longest time, while their competitors, even some mid-range and Android devices, have six or eight gigabytes of RAM. And the flagship Android devices, such as the high-tier Samsung devices, have 10, 12 gigabytes of RAM. Some gaming phones even have 16. That's pushing on the heels of PC gaming. RAM. That's pretty impressive. But because Apple does such a good job with software optimization, I mean, I've been on the same iPhone 10R for almost three years now. I'm definitely due for an upgrade. And I know that I have reviewed a lot of cell phones on this channel, including iPhones and Android devices. But I have to say, I always go back to iPhone as my daily driver just because I understand it doesn't have the hardware power but the software does such a good job of kind of boosting up what happens in the background to where I never really miss that additional power. But honestly, with this iteration of the new iMac, power really isn't as big of an issue. However, there is still that lack of support when it comes to game launchers and actual games that you can play on an iMac. Just jumping right into it, the design I think is absolutely amazing. It is freakishly thin. They do have a ton of colors, which for me as an old soul and somebody that literally is old, um, I remember the iMac computers that had the big old bubble rump on it and they were super bright, vibrant and colorful. And you get that with these new iMacs here. They're all kind of a two tone here, as you can see on the aluminum lower section and then also on the glossy plastic back cover as well. To get an idea of how thin they really are, that is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right there. And that's basically almost the entire side. That's thin, especially when you consider that that isn't just the monitor, that is the entire PC. And another cool thing, especially for gamers, as we do care a lot about cable management and whatnot, is you just have this one cable running off the back as it is your display and your PC, especially because a lot of Mac users go with the uh, Magic Mouse and Magic Keyboard, which are, of course, wireless. So basically, you don't have any wires cluttering up your setup, which is pretty sick. Now this is using the M1 chipset and that is how it is able to be this thin while still packing in all the features of previous iMacs and then some. So basically you have your power button on the back, a 3.5 millimeter jack on the side. Of course the mount does swivel. Then you have four lightning cables on the back here for your accessories and whatnot. And that is pretty much it. A very, very simplistic clean design. And the power cable was also braided, which looks very good and it is magnetized. So it just snaps into place there. And when you go to remove it, it just pops right out as it is magnetized. Now. The display is a 4.5K Retina display. So over 4K, just marginally, but Retina, which I do have to say Apple's Retina displays give traditional OLED displays a run for their money when it comes to deep dark blacks that look like the screen is 
practically off, and then very, very vibrant, rich colors. I do have to say Apple, especially over the last two years, has done a great job with their displays. Now, the display itself is 24 inches, which I think is perfect for a lot of gamers, as gamers generally prefer a small to medium size monitor, so they don't have to look around for their HUD, their map, how much ammo they have instead of taking their eyes off the action. Me personally, I have a 32 inch curved 1440p monitor, and that's perfect for me. I think it gives a good balance of immersion into the game without having to um, without having to look around the screen too much and take away from my performance in competitive games. Now, another feature that I do think is very beneficial specifically for gamers is it has a 1080p front facing camera, so you don't need to plug in a webcam. This already has a pretty good 1080p camera considering most streaming platforms like Twitch, Facebook Gaming, and YouTube cap out at 108060. This is absolutely perfect. You don't have to clutter up your setup by plugging in a webcam, it's already built in. And it does have a bunch of software filters and features built in to make it look even crisper. On top of that, you also have studio quality mics, which as we know, generally microphones that are built into laptops, PCs, TVs, whatever, really aren't that great. You're most likely gonna wanna have yourself some kind of a condenser or dynamic uh, microphone on a boom arm, whether that's XLR or USB, it is typically going to sound better. However, if you are penny pinching, which you probably aren't, if you purchase one of these bad boys as they do start at $1,300, uh, you don't need to get a microphone because you probably could use the onboard mic at least to get you through your streams for a while until you start earning a little bit of revenue and are able to upgrade to a USB mic. So the fact that you have a built-in webcam and decent mics or studio quality mics as Apple calls it, that's pretty damn cool. Next up, six speaker sound system, audio that fills a room. So basically the entire bottom section of the PC is a soundbar. It looks pretty impressive. Basically think of it as a high-end soundbar built into your monitor, your very, very sleek, thin monitor, but it actually sounds pretty amazing. So if you aren't playing with a headset, so you're not streaming or chatting with your buddies via Discord, you're just playing a single player game on your own, you could probably use it out of these speakers here and get a good stereo spread of where enemies are. So that is awesome. And again, how I alluded to in the beginning that performance really isn't the issue. Hardware performance, it's more so the lack of games you can actually play on a Mac. As with the new uh, M1 processor, you're getting up to 85% faster CPU performance and up to two times faster graphical performance than standard 21 and a half inch iMac models, which is great for photo and video editing as you can use apps like Xcode and Affinity Photo. Also, I have done a ton of photo and video editing on Macs in the past. I had a Mac mini and then also I extensively used a close friends Mac Pro for a while. Um, using things like iMovie, as well as Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. So this is a good option, maybe if this isn't gonna be your primary gaming rig, but you do wanna be able to just plug in an external hard drive to your Windows PC and then plug it into your Mac over here to do your video editing, as typically Macs of previous generations have been really good for video editing, and with this having almost 85% more juice or more processing power, this will be able to whip through your YouTube montages and compilations no problem. And then of course, since it is Apple, they have their own ecosystem of accessories. So you obviously have your uh, Magic Mouse, which I did have one of those about six years ago, and it was awesome, super sleek. And instead of a scroll wheel, you basically just glide your finger along the top and that works as a scroll wheel. That was six years ago. I can guarantee their new versions are probably a lot better. And also if you do have a previous Mac, you can trade that in at a uh, licensed Apple distributor or retailer to get money towards your new iMac. So that's pretty cool. Moving right along the iPad Pro, we're just gonna skim over this because I can't really see of any practical gaming applications with this. Mobile gaming, we're gonna cover the phone. And then also uh, home gaming, we're gonna cover the, the new iMac. But the iPad Pro, I mean, the last few generations of iPads and iPad Pros have been incredibly impressive. And this is no different with a 12.9 inch liquid retina XDR display, which I, again, like I said, it kind of makes OLEDs, traditional OLEDs look a little busted. So. Yeah, Apple's displays are really good, and this does rock 5G, so you can take it on the go. And it does have a ultra wide front facing camera. So if you are going to be using this for any kind of video chatting, video chatting apps such as Skype or Zoom, or of course FaceTime, you'll have no issue with that. Now, iPhone 12, this is not an announcement of the new iPhone 13. We are currently on the 12. They have been out for about six months now. The iPhone 12 mini, the iPhone 12, 12 Pro and 12 Max, we most likely will be getting an announcement for the iPhone 13 in about four and a half to five months with the release of it following about a month after that. However, they they did release a new color, which is this purple color here. I'm not a huge fan of this color myself, but I know a lot of people might like it. And you can add that to the lineup of colors. This is only for the iPhone 12 mini 
and regular iPhone 12 as the Pro and Pro Max feature their own colors as that has different materials and textures on the back as well as an all aluminum or steel stamped outside. Then they also released AirTags, which are virtually identical to Tile, if you guys know what those are. If not, they are basically, they are little proximity trackers that you can attach to your backpack or your keys if you're constantly losing those. You are able to quickly and easily use the ecosystem on your phone of, you know, track, track my iPhone, to track down your iPod, your iPhone, if somebody breaks in and steals your iMac out of your house, or of course now, whatever you attach this little tiny device to. I do have to say they do look very, very sleek. I like that leather design right there. Not too much into the bright, vibrant colors, but I do like that little leather design there. And it'll show you exactly what direction and how many feet away your devices are. For me personally, I always park my car in the garage with a closed, locked, alarmed garage. So I just leave my keys inside of my vehicle and whatnot. But, but it is nice to be able to keep track of your precious goods. And if you're already in the Apple ecosystem, this product makes a lot of sense. And then last but certainly not least is the Apple TV 4K. I had the original six, seven years ago. It was 1080p, not 4K. The remote was nothing fancy. It didn't have the motion sensing or anything like that. But I will say the new one does have voice searching capabilities. So if you want to browse Netflix or YouTube uh, just with this, with your voice, you can do that. It does have way more apps supported as originally. The version that I had didn't even have a Twitch app or anything. It didn't have Twitch. It didn't have Mixer. I don't think it had YouTube until a later patch and then I was able to get YouTube, but it does have a lot more app support. It is in 4K, 4K with a high frame rate and HDR. I should specify that. And another really cool thing is gaming on an Apple TV. Yes, gaming on an Apple TV. I, I said it and I'll explain it is actually really cool. So it's mobile phone games, for example, Real Racing 3, which is still to, to this date, one of my favorite mobile games, not just racing, but mobile games, period. And you can play this on your Apple TV. You turn your remote on its side and you are able to use the motion sensing inside of your TV remote to steer your car and then press the main Apple button right here for the brake. And like all these buttons become game controls. It is super, super fun. So wrapping this video up, do I think any of these are actually useful for gamers who typically go for Windows 10 PCs? And a lot of gamers also tend to go for Android phones as they do have the best sheer performance when it comes down to mobile gaming and all gaming phones that are specifically marketed as gaming phones. They might have, you know, buttons on the top for triggers, stuff like that. Uh, 120 Hertz refresh rate displays, stuff like that. Those are all Android OS devices. I do think the hardware inside of the new iMac could handle gaming. However, there is a major lack of supported games still. And that is something that I hope will come to the Apple devices over time, because as of now, there is very limited support for game launchers and being able to play the AAA titles that you can play on Windows. So you're basically just limited to like mobile games and then also games that are specific to Apple, which of course aren't really anything too crazy. They're not the games that you really want to be playing. But I do think if they had that support, they have everything else you need. They have a built-in mic, they have a built-in webcam. Cable management's kick-ass because you just have that one power cable. But I will say the use for gamers would be if you are a streamer or YouTuber and you want to be able to have a dedicated rig just for your video editing and whatnot. So it'd be a solid product for you as you are able to port all your content over and edit from there, especially if there are specific apps like iMovie that you prefer to do your video editing on. And there is a lot of video editing software such as uh, Adobe Premiere Pro and Sony Vegas that is available over there on the iMac. Now, as for the phone, we're still on the Apple 12, which is a good device for mobile gaming. However, I will say we are going to get a 120 hertz display on the iPhone 13, which will be coming out in about six months. And I would wait to do mobile gaming on that device. Uh, that is a huge selling factor for mobile gaming is a higher refresh rate. Not to mention, we did get an OLED display uh, upgrade from the previous LED display on the iPhone 12. But the iPhone 13 is going to take that a step further with that higher refresh rate. And it also is going to have deeper, darker blacks. And we are also going to be getting better speakers and a smaller notch on the 13. So that smaller notch, that is less, that smaller notch will also be beneficial for mobile gaming as that is less of your field of view that is caught up by that big ass notch. So all in all, I would say good products for productivity for general video editing and whatnot, but still not really too applicable to gamers. But I do have to say Apple does make some phenomenal products. I don't agree with, I don't agree with necessarily their entire business plan and business model, but I do have to say, they produce good products, hence I've been on using an iPhone for quite some time now. 
Uh, as far as gaming, obviously Windows 10 PC and whatnot, but I do, I do respect them for making good quality products. That's going to do it, guys. Drop in the comment section below your guys' opinion of these products that were showcased here on this video. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover a lot of news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.